I will be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. Hundreds of billions of dollars of investments into the United States and jobs, jobs, jobs. Electronic filter company Acoustis is choosing to manufacture in upstate New York instead of moving overseas. President-elect Trump thanked Ford Motor Company on Twitter this morning for abandoning plans for a new plant in Mexico and creating 700 new jobs in the U.S. I mean, this is huge, folks. Uh, it's another big company, one of the biggest companies in America. Uh, saying big time jobs, a lot of jobs coming back to America, and they say it's all because of tax reform, Apple, to accelerate its U.S. investments. Well, let's look at today with this, these big announcements that you just mentioned with AT&T giving $1,000 to 200,000 employees, and then you have Boeing putting $300 million back into their employees and charitable giving. A Florida software company, Spellex, just announced $1,000 tax cut bonus for its workforces. Apple just announced they are giving their employees tax cut bonuses worth $2,500 each. And because of our business tax reforms, Apple has just announced that they are bringing $350 billion and putting it into investment into our country. $350 billion. And Apple announcing that it will bring huge overseas profits back to invest in the U.S., paying tens of billions of dollars in taxes. Fiat Chrysler, Capital One, they're just two of the big companies that are adding uh, bonuses to their employees, adding to the list of companies which have already gone out there and issued these bonuses. In terms of the bonus that corporate America received versus the crumbs that they are giving to workers to kind of put the schmooze on is so pathetic. It's so pathetic. I think it's insignificant. What does a thousand dollar bonus mean to real people? Well, for one thing, it's a very, very big deal. Um, you know, when you've worked for a company and they want to give you a thousand dollars just because our president gave us a tax break, that's, to me, it's a big deal. Uh, we've been called deplorables and everything else, but this deplorable appreciates those breadcrumbs. AT&T, big American company, fine American company. Their tax rate over the last 10 years was a mere 8%, and they cut 80,000 jobs. That one statistic belies all this trickle-down bunk. Hmm. So here's a few more statistics for you this evening. Just in, breaking tonight, AT&T says that they will pay more than 200,000 employees $1,000 this year and bump up capital spending by $1 billion. Wells Fargo simultaneously also saying that they're going to hike their hourly pay to 15 bucks. Fifth Third Bank Corp also saying they will go to a minimum $15 per hour and a one-time bonus this year of $1,000 following the passage of the tax bill, says the company. Comcast also says they'll give $1,000 bonuses to a number of non-executive employees, and they pledge $50 billion over the next five years in infrastructure based on the passage of tax reform, says Comcast. Boeing will make a $300 million employee-related and charitable investment thanks to tax reforms. The Wall Street Journal's Robert Rubin, who has not been very optimistic about this bill overall, says there's a big disconnect out there. He says 80% of America is going to see a tax cut. But in their polling, only 17% thought they would. Uh, primarily, uh, and good or bad, from a public relations standpoint, it's certainly the right thing to do. But more importantly, as companies see greater wealth in return to the tax cuts, they're going to grow and they're going to expand. So the real winners are going to be these companies that grow and have to start right. to compete for workers. So it's not just this money they're giving back. It's the fact that I eventually see their wealth creating a, a demand for more workers and then wages and salaries goes up. That's the real benefit, Neil. So what do you expect from President Trump's first State of the Union address? Oh, uh, jobs, jobs, jobs. <laughs> it's the economy, I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, I compare it to 2014 when President Obama laid out his vision of jobs, shovel-ready jobs, and a year later the New York Times said those shovel-ready jobs weren't very shovel-ready, were they? <laughs> fuzzy yeah. wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy wuzzy wuzzy. <laughs> but this time uh, wasn't the president it goes today? in. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into a speech and he's got those jobs already in the pocket. On policy, I would give him maybe a B minus. 
to a B. Lerman calls himself a moderate or market economist. He likes much of what Trump is doing for the economy. I think the corporate reforms make sense. I think he's been pro-energy. Now, you can argue against it on environmental grounds, but I think that several steps uh, will expand output in the energy field. And that means jobs. And that means jobs, and usually good jobs. Because some of those jobs of the past are just not going to come back that he's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? African-American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. And Hispanic American unemployment has also reached the lowest levels in history. He is somebody who's now saying, look, I'm growing, uh, I'm dropping black unemployment. Uh, black people are doing well under my administration. Do, does he have a point? that maybe the Democrats yeah. have been giving us good lip service but no jobs. Maybe he's going to say terrible things but put money in our pocket. Does that make him a good leader? No, because it's not about money at the end of the day. Money is not, doesn't equate to like happiness. It doesn't. It's, that's, that's not missing the whole point. 3% growth. Is this a sustainable pace? Could we get back there with the right policy mix? Uh, no, we could get there if we get very, very lucky. If some wonderful technology comes along or, you know, something, productivity surges for reasons that we don't understand. But no, there, it's, there's nothing in policy that would raise the growth rate. Um, nobody, you know, I could, you could make me total dictator and do everything I believe wow. would work and it still wouldn't get you up by more than a few tenths of a percentage point. Economic growth. Last quarter surged to 3.3 percent. You know it. You know where it was, right? If Obama were in office now, if he were in his ninth year now, what would we be looking at? We would still be looking at growth of roughly two percent. We saw the longest streak of job creation in American history by far. A streak that still continues, by the way. Thanks, Obama. As a Democrat, do you think that President Obama has uh, has a point there? Look what I'm laughing. Do you notice how hard I, 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 I don't know? I don't know if I can stop laughing to answer, answer the question. We've had two consecutive quarters of over 3% GDP. We're going to have a third quarter of over 3% over GDP. <laughs> yeah, I compare it to 2014 when President Obama laid out his vision of jobs, shovel-ready jobs, and a year later the New York Times said those shovel-ready jobs weren't very shovel-ready, were they? <laughs> fuzzy yeah. Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy Wuzzy Wuzzy. <laughs> but this time uh, the president goes today. in. <laughs> he goes into a speech and he's got those jobs already in the pocket.